Welcome back to the Bike City Woodworks channel. Recently I invested in a new table software at my shop, so I've been spending a lot of time making new jigs and fixtures the past few weeks, like this large crosscut sled. One of the jigs I find most useful though is my Kumiko sled, so today I want to show you how easy it is to build one and how I use it. For the sled, I use an offcut of the maple plywood sheet I used to make my crosscut sled. You can definitely use any sheet material you want for your sled, but I would choose something stable for the base. Something like MDF or a good quality plywood with more than 5 plies. Exact dimensions should probably be based on your table saw, but I went with something roughly 24 inches long by 14 inches wide. My offcut had funky edges, so I started by ripping them parallel and to final size. Then I moved on to the runner that would ride in the miter slot. Although most miter slots are around 3 quarters of an inch, for a critical fit like this one I like to take my time and measure accurately with calipers. This isn't strictly necessary, you can totally just sneak up on a good fit slowly and methodically, but the calipers help me get really close to start and then I can sneak up on the right fit. As you can see here, my first pass is too wide, which is exactly where I want to be. I take another pass, removing a couple thousandths of an inch until I get a friction fit in the slot. For the remaining steps, I'm going to need to reference one edge repeatedly, so I make a note for myself on the side. It's not critical which side, but it will be the only side that touches the fence in future steps, so it's pretty important that I mark it and I remember it. From that reference edge, I measure where I want to place a shallow dado for the runner. Again, where exactly that is doesn't matter. Just make sure it's not right at the edge so you can get a good solid fit for the runner and that it doesn't move. I chose a distance of roughly two inches away from the edge. Since I cut my runner to about a half inch thick, I'm only going to make an eighth inch dado in the base. That way I have three eighths that protrude out into the miter slot. I totally could have done this with a data blade, but I don't have one, so I'm just taking multiple passes with my regular blade. Like with the runner, I'm stopping shy of the other end of the groove. I want to sneak up on the fit. I clear out the waist by shifting the fence a little bit, and then I can test the runner. It doesn't quite fit, so I can take another thin pass. This time, it's a perfect friction fit. Then I glue the runner into the dado and drive a few 3 quarter inch screws to clamp it while it dries. After it had dried for a couple hours, I came back with my Japanese pull saw to cut off the excess runner and then tested out the base. No wobbling, no sticking, just perfect. With the basic sled base assembled, I started laying out where a groove would go to hold the keys. You'll see how these keys work a little later. I started by outlining where the blade touched the base, but I quickly realized that it was a better idea to just cut the kerf. I'm going to be setting the exact pitch with this groove, so having an accurate kerf made that so much easier. I sawed just a couple inches into the board for now to establish the main kerf of the sled. I'm setting the pitch on this saw to be 2 inches. Notice that it's not 2 inches between the two kerfs, but the distance between the left side of the first kerf and the left side of the next kerf. Pitch can be measured from left, right, or center, but it always includes one full kerf in its measurement. I reset my blade height to a quarter inch and, against the reference edge, sawed the key groove. Now I turn my attention to the front and rear fences. I made these fences by laminating two pieces of plywood and ripping the fence to an inch tall. Like a traditional crosscut sled, the front fence won't be used as a reference, so I just made it reasonably square to the reference edge. I secured it with four screws, being sure to avoid the main kerf area in the middle. If you're using this sled for just hexagonal kumiko, the squareness of the back fence also really doesn't matter, but I will be using mine to make both hexagonal and square kumiko panels, so I spent some time squaring up the rear fence. I sank one screw into the fence as a pivot, then extended the main blade kerf so I could raise the blade and use it as a reference for my square. 
Being careful not to move the fence, I clamped it and sank a screw in at the opposite end. Finally, I extended the saw cut all the way through the base, and then using that as a reference, I sank the rest of the screws into the fence. I did not go through the five cut method to square it up like I did on my main crosscut sled. Unless you're planning to use your sled for other cuts, I don't think this is strictly necessary. I simply attached the fences with enough screws to ensure it wouldn't move. The fences that matter most on this sled are the angled fences. They need to be exactly 60 degrees off of the reference edge. Off camera, I cut the ends to a 30 degree angle on the miter saw, then drilled a countersunk hole in both ends of each fence. Back at the table saw, I positioned the sled into the miter slot, slid the fence up to the reference edge, and got out my 30, 60, 90 drafting triangle to position the angled fences perfectly. The angle is super important here, so having a good reference is critical. And if you're looking for a 30, 60, 90 drafting triangle, I left a link in the description below to the one that I use. You can absolutely use a bevel gauge and an angle reference block to get this angle. I just don't have a good reference for 60 degrees except this triangle, so I would just use that. Notice that while I'm drilling and driving the screws, I'm holding everything together firmly. The angled fence against the triangle and the triangle against the table saw's fence. This will ensure accuracy. I drive a few more screws when I'm happy about the placement and the sled's basically ready. It just needs one more thing, a key. The key is a piece of Kumiko that will set the pitch as I cut cross laps. I happen to have a bunch of extras I can use, but I'll show you how to make one if you don't have one. I start with a piece of wood that's a half inch thick and at least an inch wide. Setting the fence to just over the thickness of my blade, I cut one strip out. Note that I'm using a pretty long piece for this. I don't want it to fall into my saw's throat plate as I cut it. I test the thickness, readjust the fence, and try again. Once I have a nice friction fit, it's perfect. Also note that I'm using hardwood here. My normal Kumiko pieces are basswood, which is a lot softer, but using that as the key could start compressing the key's thickness over time and create error. Now that the key's done, I just slide it up against the fence and make a few cross laps. And then I use the other fence to make cross laps in the other direction. If your angles are right, you should see the two directions intersect in the middle of the cross lap, making a point in the center of the thickness of the workpiece. When that's done, you can optionally round over the fences and you're ready to make some hexagonal kumiko. Thanks for tagging along. See you next time on the Bike City Woodworks channel.